Hi, I'm Pasta Charlie and I am running through a routine to give you some postural alignment. Hi, I'm Pasta Charlie and I welcome you to my postural alignment sequence. You're going to need a slant board or a homemade slant board. Have a look at my YouTube channel. I've got a description of a homemade slant board that you can have. Very, very easy to do. Uh, if you don't feel you're up to having um, a slant board, a bought one or a homemade one, stand against the wall. Same sort of principle, you'll get your alignment all sorted out through the wall because you're using the wall, you just won't get this calf stretch. So I'm just going to put that away for a little bit. First of, all, for, ugh, first of all, we are going to do wall frog. So, get yourself set up. You might not have done this exercise before. The gist is to have your whole lower back, your whole back spine on the floor, including your coccyx. Now you may need to play around with this. I find that just about there is perfect for me. Now you need to aim just for a little, little arch in your lower back, but you shouldn't be arched like that and you shouldn't be a real solid against the floor like that. So you need to aim for your coccyx, which is there, to be on the floor. Okay, so you need to be in this position for five minutes. I'm not going to do five minutes right now because I would have been talking for much longer than that and you'll be really knackered by the end of it. Okay, so you need to have your hands out your side, upper torso completely relaxes. Uh, you need to really de-stress your whole body. I know it's hard when you're in this position, but your stomach, everything else, really nice and relaxed. Take a chill pill in your upper torso. And I, I want you to be really active with your feet. So the soles of your feet should be um, touching everywhere on the soles possibly can and your feet as well are your your toes sorry so your feet are really active along with your toes all toes from your big toe all the way to your little toe um, the little toes the toes on the outer edge will do the outer edge of your legs and your leg muscles and the inner and the big toes will do the inner thighs like that so it's really good if you can be really active and push together. Don't absolutely kill it because you've got to do five minutes in this position. So you really play around with the height that you've got your feet. You might want to be up there. Don't go down like that because you're not really going to get much of an effect. You want there to be some resistance. So the only thing doing the work are the feet and the knees here. So try to relax as much as possible. I found this a really difficult exercise to start when I first started Igoscu. Really, really difficult. So, you know, just, just find your own little sweet spot of what's perfect for you. But I, I find now that I've found my sweet spot. You know, you can play around by going a little bit further to the, closer to the wall or a little further away apart. But once you've found it, <laughs> stay there and you might feel, depending on what's going on in your body, you might feel lots of work going on the inside, you might feel lots of work going on the outside, all around your glutes. I mainly feel it in my inner thighs. What you shouldn't be feeling is you shouldn't be feeling your back tensing up. <laughs> so your back, your lumbar um, spine, or any of your upper torso, if anything is reacting like that, it's because you haven't got something going on in your lower half that you need to. Okay, so just remember, nice and relaxed. Your stomach should be nice and relaxed. No cranking forward of your pelvis. You should be feeling this in your lower back. Do feel you can pop something underneath your head to support your neck, that's completely fine. And for the last minute, I really want you to concentrate hard on pushing those feet together. Really give, give your legs some hard work 
And if you're anything like me, you'll be feeling wobbles in your five minutes, the end of the five minutes. So remembering pushing all of your toes together, the soles of your feet, the balls of your feet, everything should be nice and even. Lots of wobbles going on. Okay, and after you've done five minutes of that, we are going to do wall frog abdominal crunches. So we are going to place our hands behind our heads. Um, probably if you have if you have something underneath your neck, you're going to want to take it away for this. If you find you get neck strain or you're really tense in your jaw, don't do this following exercise because it's obviously your body's not not um, ready for this exercise at all. And sorry, all my dogs are going to start barking and howling now. Apologies. So we are going to do two sets of 25 of these. And now you are not rocking like that. You're not doing that. Your hands aren't behind your head to propel you. You are using your abdominals. And you're only go. you're looking up at the ceiling and only go as far in the crunch as you don't lose that glance up at the ceiling. Okay, pulling your elbows towards the floor. So you're not going like that. You're actually, when you're lifting up, you're going like that, using your abs. And now we've got music from my dogs. <laughs> okay, so we're doing 25 of these. And I reckon I've done about eight already, so nine, ten, remembering to breathe, not losing your glance up at the ceiling, elbows pinning back on the floor as much as possible, no tensing in your neck or in your jaw, you're not pulling anything, all the while you have to try and remember to keep your feet pressing together. You should feel those abs <laughs> kicking in now. Right, that's 25 done. Have a nice sort of shake off. You can relax your legs if you want, butterfly them together if that helps. Okay, another set of 25. But remember, if you're really, I don't want you going really, really quickly or rushing. So if the first 25 or even the first set of 10 are um, enough for you, don't worry. Just leave it there. It's much better to do it properly than to rush through and get the set done and just not get the benefit of it. So it's real slow movement, this. Just my abs doing the work, nothing else. 10. Fifteen. Twenty. Ah, <laughs> and that's your 25 done. So two sets of 25 in wolf rock. And now we are going to do kneeling Aztecs. So we are coming to the wall like this. And you won't be able to see my um, head, but you don't need to see, see my head. We are putting our, I'm going to actually shift this a little bit so that you can see where my, my, we're probably about, You're not, you don't want to be too far away from the wall because you want some resistance. So I'd probably say half of your far up forearm apart from the wall. And you're going to put your hands chest height, spread really wide, as wide as you can. And your feet are going to, you're going to come up on your toes like that. And now we are going to be using our feet to propel us forward and our shoulders to push back. Okay, so you're 
you've got this resistance, this party going on between your shoulder blades and your feet. Now you should, you, you, depending on what your body is feeling, you might feel this anywhere from your thighs, you should feel it in your shoulders, really creates lots of tension in your shoulders and your feet, your quads. So you're going to do this push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, push really actually. It's all of those shoulder blades doing the work as well as your thighs and your feet. Okay. Remembering to breathe. No, I haven't been counting there. <laughs> so give yourself a shake off if you need to. And we are going to do another set of two, so two sets of 20, three sets of 20, and we've already done one set. So give yourself a nice shake off. Okay, here we go. Another 20. One, two, three, Tummy nice and relaxed. Ten. <laughs> That's your twenty done. Uh, give yourself a shake off if you need to, and then get back to it. Okay, so. All set up nicely, hands nicely spread as wide as you can. And remembering, using that tension from your feet and your shoulder blades doing the work, you shouldn't be doing that. It's not that kind of a move. It's a very subtle move coming from your shoulder blades. Got 10 more to do. Okay, <laughs> shake yourself off, do a little shoulder shrugs if you need to, <laughs> get those shoulders working. And now we are going to do the kneeling wall stretch, I've called this, because um, I've seen somebody else do it and I've got it on my channel because I loved it so much, but I'm not actually quite sure what it's called and I don't think it's an Egoski exercise, but I absolutely love it. So, aim of the game. <laughs> is to get your, you need to have your arms at your shoulder, so shoulder width apart. And if you can, spread your hands as wide and have them slightly out from your shoulder, shoulder width. And now you are going to be having your feet flat on the floor like that and press into the wall with your, with your elbows and your hands. Don't let your feet raise up. Don't go like that. <laughs> Don't scrunch them up. You want them flat on the floor. And you really want to push into the wall. Tummy nice and relaxed. <laughs> Head nice and relaxed down the floor like that. Really open up. And now pull back into your hips. Pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Pull back while <laughs> pushing forward. Tummy nice and relaxed. Remember to breathe. And relax. Hold that one for a minute or two minutes if you can. And now we are going to do, I've got this all written down on my sheet of paper because I forget. Uh, we are going to do standing arm circles. So you have your feet hip width distance apart. 
and make sure that I'm not going to hit the wall. Hip with distance apart, slightly pigeon toed, so that your outside edges of your feet are nice and straight. You've got the golfer's grip, which is like that. Thumbs facing forward, palms down. In a circular forward movement, we are going to do little arm, <laughs> arm circles, little circles with our hands. Relax your neck and your head. Keep that dynamic tension going. And I have not been counting, so I reckon we've got another 10 to go. So one, two, four, two. Okay, shake yourself off. <laughs> now we're going to do the opposite way. So hands on side, golfer's grip. Arms up like that, palms up, palms facing up. And now we do clockwise motion. Otherwise I'd always forget this. So clockwise. Neck nice and relaxed, head nice and relaxed. Finished. That one's always the most difficult for me, doing it the backward motion. Oh, my shoulders are on fire now. Oh, it's really good. Okay, and now we are going to do standing wall twist. Need a piece of wall like this, very technical. And we are going to put our left foot in front of our right foot. Now, just make sure that you've got your balance really nice and centered. Don't be over like this or over like that. Don't hyperextend your knees either. If you, ha if you have a tendency to hyperextend your knees, just give them a little, a little bend in them. You want to make sure that you're nice and centered. Okay, and now we're going to stand against the wall like that, placing our hands both on the wall like that, and we're going to twist to the right. So we are using our torso and our pelvis to do a really nice spinal rotation. Lock on your knees and your quads. They should be doing work in this exercise. It's not a passive exercise for them. So turn and face the right with your head. That's doing the twist as well. Remembering to breathe, making sure that your quads are locked on. Okay, and now we're going to turn around and do the other side. Now I forgot what side I did that. <laughs> That one, so I've got my, uh, you'll get the gist of this when you've done it a couple of times. Okay, so my right foot is now in front of my left foot and I'm making sure that I'm nicely centered in my body. And now I'm placing my hands on the wall like this and I'm twisting to the left with my head, my torso, and my pelvis is following. Now I'm making sure that my quads are locked, my knees are locked on, but trying not to hyperextend. Relax your tummy, making sure that both of your big toes of your feet are really pinned down to the ground. Your back one will probably want to lift up on this move. Okay, I reckon we've got another 10 seconds to go. This is all guesswork because I haven't got my stopwatch. Okay, <laughs> now we have a crocodile. <laughs> so I'm going to show you from here. You don't need to really see my head as much. So crocodile, fly on the floor like this making sure that you're nice and relaxed as much as possible. Okay, now you are going to have your, I'm going to 
instruct it. You can either have, see what your body is doing, but you can either have palms up or palms facing down. I'm going to have palms facing down. And you are dorsiflexing your ankles. Okay, you are going to pick your left foot up and place it in between your big toe space and the next toe. Keeping both of those ankles dorsiflexed, you are going to come over to the right, twist right, forward like that. So you're twisting your pelvis and now you're looking to the left. Okay, really lock on your quads and your glutes, dorsiflexing, really keep those ankles nicely dorsiflexed. Remembering to breathe. Shoulders and arms should be fully on the floor. If they're not, you've gone too far with your twist. Don't go as far with the twist. You need to keep your, your basically your upper torso, your, well not your upper torso, you need to make sure that your arms and your shoulders are all nicely grounded. Okay, if you can't do a minute of that, do 30 seconds because it's quite a quite an intense stretch. We are going to do the other side now. So play, remember to dorsiflex your ankles, place your right Achilles heel in your big toe space and exactly the same, twist over to the left, really, Contract your glutes and your quads, dorsiflex both your ankles, pulling them back to your shins. Look to the right hand side. Remember to breathe. It's really easy in this exercise to stop breathing. At first, when you start doing this, you might find it really hard because your diaphragm is being a bit squashed with all the new movements. Don't panic in this exercise. Okay, come back, <laughs> have a little breather if you need to. Sorry, all oh, my dogs are barking. <laughs> now we have got the modified IT band stretch. Now this, this is one of my new favourites. I'm going to bring, I'm going to do it this way and then you can see if I need to, I'll move around the other side as well. Okay. Excuse, excuse my unladylike position here. We are going to cross our right leg over to our left leg. And now we are going to bring our, so we're doing a twist. Okay, bring the twist, bring the twist, bring the twist. I know I can't quite do it, but palms should be down. And now we look to our opposite side, which is left hand side. Remember to breathe. Go down as far as you can with your legs and your knees. Tummy nice and relaxed. Okay, come back up to the beginning. Okay, now we're going to do the other side as well. So we're going to place our left leg, we're crossing them. Okay, and now we're going to go over to the, oh, whoops, to the left hand side. And now we're going to look to the right. Palms facing down. And whatever side, so this side, I'm going over to the left. Um, my left hip shouldn't ever come off the floor. And the first, the first side that we did, the right side, when you're leaning over, the hip shouldn't be coming off, it should stay grounded. So I'm going over to my left hand side and my right hip is off, and that's completely fine. Okay, if you love this stretch, feel free to stay in there for longer two minutes each side, it's such a good stretch. You might find that one side is tighter than the other. Okay, 
Now, if you're super flexible, um, I'm flexible, but my I've got really chunky thighs, so I can't do it. But I do know some people that can actually wrap their feet round there. I so say you've really crossed it. I can't do it. My they're too chunky. Um, that is a brilliant stretch if you can do that. I think I just need to like shave off half my calf really to be able to do that. But um, if I, I can't even show you how to do it, if you can do that, uh, being a contortionist, feel free. That's an amazing stretch like that. Okay, we have got wall drop now. So that is where we've got our homemade slant board or um, the slant board that you've bought. So, set that up there. We are going to do two, I've got a little stopwatch there that I've already set. <laughs> so, making sure your feet are hip width distance apart and parallel. You are going to make sure that you're nicely centered on your slant board. Your heels, your calves, and your bottom and your shoulders and hopefully your head. Shoulders, hopefully shoulders and head should be against the wall. Don't worry if they're not, because you shouldn't force this. And we're just gonna relax here. Now we're gonna do two minutes on this bit, and then we're gonna do some other exercises on the slant board. I normally try to spend 10 to 15 minutes just standing on my slant board in the mornings after I've done my menu. It's such an amazing piece of equipment. It's really helped me with my ankle dorsiflexion as well. Really, it's kind of forced me. So just talk again what you should be feeling in this or, or how you should be standing. Our upper torso nice and relaxed, arms down by sides, tummy nice and relaxed. And you might find it hits a really intense calf, calf stretch on here. Now, I'm not finding that at the moment because I've done a lot on this this morning already. It's really important to make sure you're really centered on this and to look straight ahead. So don't be tempted to be on your phone or watch something out the window or you know go down like this. Really important to have your gaze right staring ahead in front of you, like headlights, like you're driving a car, you always want to be, you know, your head's really centered in this. You're using the wall as a plumb line. Okay, I'm just gonna stop the timer and now we are going to do the wall presses. So we're still on our slant board, okay. We're going to have our arms out like that, palms facing up, and now we are going to press our hands and our lower arms into the wall. And we are using our shoulders to do this. Okay, so we're doing 10. So I reckon we're at five now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And now we are dropping our head like that and doing the same again as our hands and our forearms pressing into the wall. And think of it, it's not your hands doing the work at all, it's your shoulder blades. Okay, so I reckon we've got three, two, one. Now we are going to turn our hands around, so their palms facing down and do the same again. So one, two, three, four, and you shouldn't be coming off like that. You sh your torso should be nice and steady. It's a really little movement coming from your shoulder blades, instigated by your hands and your forearms. Okay, after you've done 10 of those, we are dropping our head forward, tummy nice and relaxed. So 10 again, jaw, is really nice and relaxed, the neck too. Okay, that's those 10 up. And now we are going to do an arm movement like this. <laughs> it's called wall glide. So, 
Start up like that in the goal post position with our, you can't really see because my camera's, <laughs> it's too close for this movement. So our hands are like that, nice and spread. And we're starting goal pose. Now we're bringing our, arm, our arms up above our heads so that they can, I'm going to get up on my slant board because you can't see what my arms are doing. <laughs> okay, goal pose. And now we're going up like that. Okay. We're going to do three sets of 20. I was counting that one. So I'm going to call that, that's the first set of 25. I think I'm being mean to you here. Feel free if you want to do three sets of 10 instead, but I'm doing three sets of 25. I'm going to count now. Tummy nice and relaxed. Arms and forearms nice and flat, hands nice and flat, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Have a little shake off if you need to. I bet your calves are on fire now. Okay, last set of 25. Remembering to breathe. Last five. Oh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed the sequence.